about the topic, how to enrich our tango. The important thing that we have to talk is that I have many, I have many students that they ask me, or friends that they ask me, for example, or organizers too, that they ask me about levels. What do I think about the levels of tango? This is a beginner, this is an intermediate, this is an advanced. It's an important topic because I've seen uh, since I'm abroad, Argentina, many people talk about this kind of, of things, for example. This guy is an advanced, this guy is a beginner, this guy is an intermediate. I would like to tell you um, things that can help us to improve uh, a good dancing, to be a good dancer or a good tanguero, if we may. So one of the things, the first of the things that I consider that, that help uh, is that the, this person, this dancer, for example, I consider that it's very, very important that the dancer has to be, uh, it has to have a commitment with tango, with his own or her own tango. I'm not s saying that. I don't want to think that if that guy doesn't dance um, traditional or, or whatever the style, um, he's not a good dancer, because I, I don't think that is, it works that way. People, some of you know me personally, and you know that, I, that I, I have a style to dance. And I know that you all have a style. Everyone has a style that uh, matches perfect or or will match perfect, maybe it's a process, uh, with what you feel about tango. Something that is very important in, in to, to let it clear from the beginning of this podcast is that, to me, it doesn't matter what, what's the style. It can be tango nuevo, for example, it can be tango uh, milonguero, it can be tango salon, it can be canchengue or whatever the style. The important is the commitment. The important is that uh, that person should have the, the compromise to improve, to explore things, to have experiences, internal experiences with, uh, with that tango that uh, this dancer have chosen. So first, it doesn't matter the style. Second, it has to be a, a true style from that person. It has to come from a dialogue between that person and the music that is sounding. It doesn't matter which kind of music, because maybe to me Donato is not a good tango, but maybe for another one Pugliese is not a good tango. So it doesn't matter which kind of music, because everyone will have uh, our own experience, for example. We will have our own experience with the tango. Why is that? Because one of the important things that we always say in tango is that we have to dance our past. So what is dancing our past? Tango is a dialogue. First is a dialogue between the music and us. After that, we can share that with someone else, with a partner. But first is a dialogue between the tango and, and us. So the way that we interact with that tango What kind of things, what kind of experiences, what kind of emotions we have inside. Otherwise we are doing just a sport, or we are doing a choreography, or we are doing different things that are not tango in my, in my opinion, for example. If you don't have that commitment, if you don't have that compromise, internal compromise with the tango that you are dancing by that moment, 
Maybe you are doing something else. I don't know what it is. But it's not my tango, what you are, done, what you are doing. So, another important thing that we have to understand is that once that we start approaching to someone and having the experience to communicate with someone, listening to someone, we have to feel that passion, that eager to go, to improve, to explore things. It's not only to move, and that's okay, so I've been in two or three classes, so I have the technique enough, so I can move, I can go to a milonga. I think that's, the, that, that's not enough. In my opinion, it would be important to, for being a good dancer means one of the things is that you, you need, one of the requirements is that you need to want to go even further. Another thing is about what we can do as dancers. So what I think is that uh, when I see someone, uh, when I want to imagine someone that is a good dancer, for example, or as many people say, an advanced dancer. What is a good dancer? To me, a good dancer is someone who has all the things that we have talked before, and we have a very um, wide amount of resources, of, of technical resources. But no, I don't mean technical as a technique. I mean one person who can, in a very short, short space, he or she can manage to do different things with quality, of course. That means the manage of the space, the manage of the variety of those resources. That means that person is a, is a good dancer. Someone who is not a good dancer is always doing the same. In a different space, is doing the same. In a, in a small space, is trying to do exactly the same things, exactly the same sequences, or the same dynamics of the moment that it was in a very wide space. Which means that dancer doesn't have an a good management of the space, which means that that dancer maybe doesn't have enough resources to manage different kind of spaces. So we have another, mm. another um, point that is the resources in short space. I've seen many times Dancers whom are considered advanced, for example, or maybe teachers, or maybe famous guys, for example, that in a very short space, they cannot improvise. They do the same sequence as before, or exactly the same movement without taking, taking into account the the space without taking account what is sounding. So that's another topic that we can talk about the music. How important is the musical resource that that, that dancer has to have? To me, it is, it is very important. It's one of the topics that they are very, very important. Privet Inesa Tikak so, we just started here. We are talking about some of the things that are important, at least in my opinion, for someone to be a good dancer. And we are in the music resources. Which, which things this dancer is listening? 
is always listening to the rhythm, for example. That's not a good dancer, in my opinion. That's the beginner. The beginner will do always the rhythmical things. I've heard many masters in, in Buenos Aires saying exactly the same. Don't dance the rhythm, don't dance the rhythm, don't dance the rhythm. And I've seen, for example, Shippo, how are you? Um, I've seen many times, for example, dancers that they are doing all the time the rhythmical stuff. Or another kind of dancers that they are doing, for example, just the violin. Absolutely predictable to dance the violin. Absolutely predictable. When the violin sounds, we can have an army of thousand, thousand dancers worldwide that they do enrosque with lapis. So a violin is sounding automatically enrosque with lapis. That's not musicality for me. We can talk about what is musicality in the future. That's another topic that we will talk. Misha, <laughs> quiero canchenguear con vos. <laughs> Misha, privet, tikak. Eh, Michael Natochi, fantastic dancer, guys. Um, so, we were talking about what kind of musical resources a good dancer has to have, for example, not only to have the, the, the skill to, to dance the rhythm, the melody, but not always the melody, because if, if all the time that dancer is dancing the melody, and in that phrase is important the rhythm, or in that phrase is important <clears throat> um, the counter bass, so maybe that guy is not listening too well. Because in music, some of you know that I'm a musician too, so I know how the music is composed, and uh, the composer wants always to give you a message, to send you, is preparing the, the rails, the road for you to, to walk, to walk and to feel good. The composer is always like a guy who wants you to to go for a, go through a sunny road with the sun and the trees and something like that. The composer wants you to enjoy mostly, unless you are listening to Schoenberg. If you are not listening to Schoenberg or one of his students, probably the composer would like you to enjoy. So, by the moment that the composer is playing the counterbass, is raising the volume of the counterbass, it means that maybe the melody is not important exactly in that moment. So, that's one of the resources that we, we should talk more in the future. Lie. And how important is it to understand the lyrics? Ah, it's... What a topic to talk about. We will have a controversy here. It is important, really. It is important, of course. Um, it's not the most important thing, but, but it will help. Why is that? Because there were dancing, dancers in the past, milongueros in the past, that they should no, they, they, they were dancing all the instrumentals only. Some dancers, they didn't want to dance the, the um, tangos that they were with the singer. They just wanted to, to sit. They just wanted to, not having the mate in the milonga, but they wanted the wine or the whiskey. But it will help. It will help to, to know about the lyrics because lyrics are different depending on the style of tango, the area. 
So believe me, it will help. We will talk about that. It's one of the topics that I have that I have a script here for future for future meetings about the lyrics, about the areas, the geography, migration, those kind of things. We will talk about those kind of things. Remember, guys, that in this channel, in Tango for All, um, if you subscribe, we will have different playlists. One, one playlist is about this podcast. This kind of podcast will be every week posted. One other playlist is about tutorials. Um, one other is uh, about documentaries of tango and I will comment about them for people that they are not from my city that they want to they are interested um, about the uh, subtitles things with some friends so maybe we can manage because the translation is important for the most of the people that they can uh, more amount of people the better